So uh, for the rest of the of, of this hour, so I think we have about half an hour left. I'm going to invite different people to share their stories. And I'm going to show you how from that brief story, we can start to identify one. What are non-negotiables at work? What are the meanings that show up? Even from the tiny little blip of an, a memory. Secondly, what is our value added? What are the things that we can express in our resumes? And look for in job descriptions. It's like, yes, this is, this is me. And so I was partnered with Srini. And so I, because already we, we fleshed out a little bit, I'm going to invite him to join uh, first and then I'll call for, for volunteers. Yeah. So Srini, if you can unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Thank you. And um, would you tell us the, the, the example of how you use your first, what are your top strengths? And secondly, how you use them in an example at work. Right. So uh, I basically looked at that chart that earlier Paula showed and, and there were multiple that I, I thought resonated with me, but the ones that immediately strikes in the mind is about humor and honesty and, and teamwork. Those are, those are, those are th three things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, but starting with humor, basically, um, I I was in this situation that I wanted to give uh, give a back, backdrop or to that. So basically, we were in a in a in a meeting where the talent acquisition lead lead was there, and their job is to basically talk about how great things are there in this in this company. And and this presentation was about how we sell our uh, our organization strengths to an external audience or a potential uh, somebody who wants to join join the company so so when they were doing the presentation obviously when when you're talking about great things about the company you, you make a list of uh, things that are um, that are all uh, fabulous uh, and so i i basically uh, was in a group setting and and after the presentation i i kind of made a little bit of a comment or a, or a joke that they should say that basically all this is great from a sales perspective because of this is salesy and it's a front end of what we present to the uh, to the audience but then when we actually land the job he or she who joins will will actually see how how the things are actually run on the on the floor and there will be so many differences and when when i obviously i'm not exactly recounting the way it, it is done but but the thing is that when I said that, that kind of triggered a little bit of a little bit of an energy in the room, and everyone uh, around talked uh, in the team started to talk about, you know, their experience of what, how they, when they joined, what were they told versus what what they found. So, so it became it it became a discussion of um, sharing things that were working and not working and the stuff like that. Thank you for sharing, Srini. So here's what I heard you say. You, your top strengths were, you identified with humor, honesty, and teamwork. Teamwork. And how that, in, in your, mem in your, in what you remembered at work on how to, when you applied those strengths, um, you were able to create uh, an energy, a group energy. Mm -hmm. And you enjoyed being in that uh, kind of catalyt catalytic position. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're going to do, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the four sources of meaning. So here, you know, what from these four, which in addition to the strengths, did you hear Srini talk about, which is important to Srini at work? What's meaningful for him? If you can put it in the comments. And also, Srini, if you'd like to talk about it. Yeah, I think somebody put relationships and that's that's perfect, actually. That's that's exactly what it is. Um, um, yeah, teamwork. Yeah. So perhaps, you know, what would it feel like to think about it as a non-negotiable in a job description where you know, that, that talks about like if, if you were uh, somebody who needs to be 
working on their own from home without contact with other people, what, how, how, how likely is it that you would feel, you know, happy in that environment? Yeah. Other other than other than the fact that uh, you, you know sometimes you you need your time to get tasks done, but generally, where I get energy from is interacting with people and and helping people and you know also being part of the teamwork kind of environment where where we collectively work on a goal. So that that what and that's what energizes me basically. Okay. So here I also heard that you need time to work individually, in addition to being in a work environment that has a, a lot of opportunity to relate and create teamwork, maybe that's also part of your job design. Mm -hmm. That you have space to work independently. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the sharing now. And the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about um, the value add. So. Here, um, I'm gonna use this book and I'll put it in the, somebody can put it in the comments. It's called The Value Added Employee by um, Edward Kripe and Richard Mansfield. And, and it kind of lists different, um, different competencies and how to, and, and these are things that you can put in a resume. So, the first thing is like, what are your non-negotiables? What are the things that are meaningful to you that for sure you need in a job? And the second thing is, thank you, um, Trini, for putting that in the comments. Uh, the second thing is like, what are the individual things? So uh, Trini was like, well, I came to this workshop to talk about strengths, but also, you know, so, so, so what that we know our strengths? How do we communicate that? How do we make that relevant? And, and if there's a tiny step to communicating, which is to link those strengths to the value added that you add to the company. So Srini, here's the two things that I've heard. One, you have a talent for, a, co a competency for influencing others. So you were able to you know, make a comment that brought people together and then create some kind of energy where it was a cohesion. And then secondly, you also mentioned about uh, bringing people together to achieve goals. That's the other thing I heard you say. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, um, influencing interpersonal awareness, influencing others, building collaborative relationships, all of these are specific value added skills that just came from that brief uh, example. In addition to achieving results, initiative, fostering motivation, um, results orientation. All of these are also specific. So if you start to flesh out your example, you can start to hear things that you can put in your own on your own resume, but also things that you can uh, see in a, in a job description. So Trini, what, what else are you hearing from, from this conversation? Yeah, I think you, you touched upon results oriented. So that's that's another uh, that's another thing that definitely uh, resonate with me. I I, uh, I worked in companies for longer term projects, and I, in fact, I was in one company for twenty eight years, uh, but but have worked in two l large projects for longer term, and and have the tendency to do the thing and persevere, and then also improve upon it, and then you know continue to do that basically. So grow. Uh, get get the baseline and then grow from that. So it's kind of a long term. Um, I don't know. Again, I guess the value added book will give, help me put it in the right words uh, that are sellable. But uh, that that's what. Um, so here's another competency that I heard: um, continuous improvement. Yeah. Process improvement. Yes. So here here are kind of clues that can lead you to you know the kind of. I mean, it could be more than one, right? But perhaps a job that could be really fulfilling is one where you can build relationships, but you have time to work on your own and you get to use your strengths in a way that you can achieve goals and improve processes in some way. You can catalyze a team in order to move in the direction of goal achievement. What else, what's missing from, from this to make, to help you feel like this is 
you know, solid or you feel like the narrative is is clear? No, the, the narrative is, uh, is definitely sounding better than how I would have put it in, in the words. But yeah, yeah, some of those... So those are the uh, core competencies, and, and 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 especially the one that you talked about, the last one about the process improvements. I I uh, I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist, but because it's it it can be both good and bad sometimes. So but but to strive for, you know you 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 don't want it has to be good quality. You have to feel that that you know what you're delivered is good. So it's not only for me, but also when I'm talking or mentoring my team, I make it to to help them think about okay how can we make this better not in a in a very um uh, in a very uh, in, a, in in a manner that is not like forcing them to do it but kind of helping them think about okay you tell me how how does it work you know what can we do better and that kind of stuff so so i i i do that myself but i also show that as an example and then i take that team along when i do that for sure okay. so so maybe it's process improvement in addition to team development, individual yeah. development. There, there's always the team out there, yes. Supporting the, the, the person to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Srini, thank you so much.